Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in to Keeping It Guyanese with Anna. Today I'm gonna show you guys how to make some Guyanese pint heart. So stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's me, your girl Anna, with another video on how to make Guyanese pint heart. Stay tuned. So you're in my kitchen today, and I'm definitely gonna show you how I make pine tart. And if you know me, and you know me from back home, you would have known that this is one of my specialties. I used to make this and sell it back home as a teenager. I went from door to door, house to house, making Guyanese pine tart, cheese rolls, and all these little goodies selling. So you know that this is my specialty. I'm really good at this. And I'm gonna give you an insight on how I make my pine tart. This is usually a snack that most people enjoy with their family. It's a nice, sweetie, very sweet snack. And you usually buy it from the store. Let's see if I can teach you how to make Guyanese Fight Heart. Stay tuned. And I'll show you my ingredients. Okay, so these are the ingredients that you're going to need to make your Fight Heart. Four cups of flour. Okay, so let's go. At this point is where I add the butter to the flour and I add the lard to the flour and I mix it all up until I get a crumbly, dusty kind of mixture. So you're gonna mix everything up. Make sure that your butter is not room temperature and that it was in the fridge because you need it nice and cold. This ingredient ingredients needs to be having cold ingredients added to it. So I'm gonna just, right now, just mix everything up and you guys are gonna see what it looks like. Oh yeah, so I really love how it's looking. After I mixed it in, this is what it's supposed to look like. Okay, now I'm gonna just put a little bit of You just of need salt. to apply so a pinch of salt bowl. to your ingredients. And you just put a little bit of salt, not a lot. I don't need to measure the salt because I've been doing this for a while, so I know what is, um, I know how much salt I need. Okay, so we're gonna rest this to the side. And we're gonna take the head off of the pine. And that was easy, right? And, and I'm just cutting my pine right now. I'm gonna cut off the skin off of the pine, clean the pine very clean and nicely so that we could cut it in four and grate this pine because this is gonna be the main ingredient. At this point, I'm tasting the pine to see how sweet it is. That will determine how much sugar it needs. That pine was really good. So I cut it into four and I'm saying that I will 
have to show you guys what to do with the skin. You could always make some pine drink with that. But we're not doing that in this video, so I'm going to put it in a bag and just dispose of it. But I'll definitely come back and show you a video where we use that pine skin to make some pine drink. So that paper that I have right there, make sure to keep your paper from your butter so that you could grease your pan, oil your pan with it to put your pastries. And I'm grating the pine. Out of the four pieces that I cut, I'm just going to be grating three of those pieces. I'm making not the big, huge pine tart. I'm doing some cocktail size pine tart today. So I'm grating the four pieces to prepare just two. And the middle part, you know that hard part in the pine, you don't need to put that in to stew. So you're going to notice that when I get to that part, I'm usually just taking that part and putting it aside as I continue to grate the rest of the pine. And if you see, um, it's looking like my hands is moving very fast. It's because I, you know, I fast forward this video so that you don't see me taking my time grating the pine. So I'm just walking you through the steps of what I am doing right now. So I'm cleaning off, making sure that I get all the pine from the inside and the outside. Make sure, you know, you check inside and make sure everything is taken out and put it. And uh, I'm going to proceed now to shoot that pine. So I put it in the pan. This is usually the pan that I use to do a lot of my frying and stuff. So. Um, I usually do a lot of the stewing too of my pine certain things when I'm doing big stuff this is, I have certain pans Some for that vanilla I'm extract. adding vanilla extract to the pine and I'm gonna add about a cup of sugar or a little bit less than a cup it depends on how sweet you like your pine tart this amount that I'm adding is just the perfect amount to have the perfect taste in pine tart as I told you guys before this is something that I have been doing for about 20 years because I'm 35 now and I started making pastries I think I was 14 or 15 so I think it's about 21 years so I'm basically considering myself an expert at this so you add the sugar and I'm gonna let this chew down um, I don't chew my pint hard for it to burn or anything but you guys will see the consistency of what I look for when I'm chewing I want to get rid of the water that is in there but I want it to chew right in that so I'm just gonna uh, mix that together and then I'm gonna turn the stove on medium and then just let that chew for a little while it was on the stove for maybe about 15 minutes Ooh, it's hot in this kitchen but let me show you guys how our two pine is coming along and you can see this two pine looks beautiful it's not there as yet but i love the smell this sends your kitchen crazy at this point it's finished it's dry enough for me because i like i don't like a dry dry pine tart so i want you to be able to taste all the flavors in that pine tart you need a lot inside of the pine tart so we turn off this fire now and let's move on to the next step okay guys so the pine was finished to win and here i put it in a bowl so that you can see what it looks like after it was finished doing. And I made, remember in the beginning, I made the crumbs, the pastry crumbs. I have my bowl of ice water here, my egg wash. This is what I'm gonna clean the pastry with after I'm finished. I have some flour to dust my board. I, I cannot find my pastry cutter for cutter. anything, so I'm improvising. And I have a fork and a knife, and we're gonna begin. Oh yeah, remember when I told you to save your paper because you could use it to grease your pan? So I'm because I'm gonna just press them in this pan. 
so I took the pumpkin and put a little bit of butter on it and I grease the pan because I don't want my pastries to stick. ice water into the pastry right into the pastry I didn't want the ice but I'll just bring that out and with the water that I throw there I'm gonna be making a dough a ball. I normally do it at a little bit at a time, but because I was talking, I wasn't paying attention. I put more than I would put for that.
first of all, you could press some of these down if you want. Okay, I only press down half of them and I leave some of them pressed so you can have an idea when you're doing yours if you want to seal them with um, a knife. I clearly meant a fork. I don't know what I was water. talking about, so sealing it with a knife. <laughs> I meant a fork. How I learned to do it. When I first learned, you would press it down with a fork. Also, if you don't eat egg and you're a vegetarian, you could go right ahead and put some milk in a bowl, whichever milk is your preference, and you could base the top of your pastry with milk. It doesn't have to be eggs. We do eggs to give the pastry that nice golden color. But when I used to do this and I had um, customers who weren't eating egg or rasta. I would substitute the egg and do it with milk because I wanted to make everyone happy or sometimes I would do half with egg and half with milk and separate them so that they're not together. The choice is yours on if you want to do it with eggs or not. Okay, and I've based every, I based all of it and I have my oven set to 350. And I'm going to put these pastries in the oven now. I did not do all. I still have pine leaves back. And I did not chew a whole pine either. But because the time that I'm doing this flimming, and you might notice that my I have my makeup done and all that. I'm usually not cooking with looking fly or nothing of the sort, but I'm about to take my daughter to her Girl Scout meeting and I have to finish this video, but I will show you the end results. So this is what the pastries look like. They're hot, they just fell to the oven. You're gonna keep checking your pastry when it's in the so oven until like. it gives you a golden brown. That's when you know that it's ready um, to come out. I hope of the you oven. love it. You guys notice the difference between the ones that had um, the fork I pressed and the ones without the fork. And I did this one specially like this to show you if you don't fold it together and bring it together, this is what's gonna happen. So I wanted to do one like that to show you guys. Thank you so much for all the likes and the shares on my video please continue to subscribe